Good morning, friends of St. Peter's, and thank you for joining us for our 745 service. We are blessed this morning to have with us Sarah Jones as our reader. Deacon Bob will proclaim the gospel, and I'll be your preacher. Thank you to our producers who are posting the bulletin in the comments, both on Facebook and on YouTube. And we hope that you will like and share this video so your friends and your family members and colleagues who might be hungry for some spiritual nourishment this morning nourishment this morning can join us as well. Most of all, just thank you for being with us. Our opening acclamation for this season after Pentecost is, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll say the great and wonderful together. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O Sovereign of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him in a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up, and he lived in the wilderness and became an expert in the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading this psalm as it's printed in your bulletin and in the Book of Common Prayer, page 709. 
Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. You save, save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Should we continue in sin in order to, that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we've been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the twelve disciples, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It's enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house the Elzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the, from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs on your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake 
will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I pray that God's word is spoken and that God's word is heard. Amen. Well, those are some pretty intense passages and not the most joyful passages for us to hear on Father's Day weekend. Good grief. Um, the family values in these, so to speak, uh, in these stories is a little bit challenging. Um, but I am encouraged. And why I'm encouraged is the refrain that we heard in the gospel reading that Deacon Bob just offered us. Uh, and it's more obvious poetry in the Greek than it is in the English. Uh, but Jesus says three times, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Our translator said, you know, uh, 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 use the word fear instead. But the words really are, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. There is a lot of suffering in these readings. There's a lot of suffering in this world. But hear Jesus say to us over and over again, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, though Jesus himself mentions the cross. He mentions the cross for the first time in Matthew's gospel. He mentions the cross in this passage. That is um, a... Uh, a continuation of that missionary discourse. He's about to send out the disciples, although he doesn't actually send them out. It's a kind of ironic thing. He goes through this whole missionary discourse about sending them out and not how it plays out actually in Matthew's gospel, but, but the refrain we hear over and over again is do not be afraid. And that can help us read these other readings, particularly this terrifying reading from Genesis. And indeed, um, this is really not a great passage to read on Father's Day, unless we focus on the promise-keeping love, the, the, um, the hesed, the um, steadfast love, as we prayed in um, our psalm, the steadfast love of God, our Father, our Creator. And I wish someone had told Sarah not to be afraid, because Sarah is very afraid, and her fear makes her cruel, makes her terribly, terribly Cool. The cruelty had started before, long ago. Um, it, it looks very much like Hagar was actually kidnapped from Egypt, from the stint that Abram and Sarah had in Egypt. And, um, and when Sarah begins to be afraid that the promises that were made to her um, and to Abram uh, about uh, their descendants being as many as the grains of the sand, despite their age, we've heard that passage recently, um, she starts to fear that that actually won't come true, and so she arranges for Hagar, essentially, um, to serve as her surrogate, uh, and Hagar bears Abraham's son, Ishmael. Uh, when it's clear that Hagar is pregnant, Sarah turns on her. Even though this was Sarah's whole plan, um, even though uh, God had promised her this. It's like she didn't quite trust God. She was afraid and she didn't trust God to come through on God's promises. So she started engineering something. And, um, and nevertheless, when her engineering actually did result in Hagar's pregnancy, she starts abusing Hagar. Um, and Hagar runs away and God encourages her to go back, which is really uncomfortable, to go back to um, Sarah and, and Abraham and um but encourages her says it's going to be okay and she comes back but she names god in that story she names god el roy god who sees me and time passes she has ishmael and then isaac comes along which is great yay isaac um uh which means uh laughter and that's where we come to the passage today uh, Ishmael is several years older than, um, than Isaac, though in this story it sounds like he's actually almost a baby himself. Um, that doesn't actually quite play in the story. But um, Isaac and Ishmael are playing. Isaac, laughter, and Ishmael are playing. And Sarah hears Ishmael Isaacing, laughing. And it's translated as playing in our, um, in our reading. But, um, 
uh, Ishmael is essentially laughing and Sarah is resenting that Ishmael seems to be Isaacing, seems to be um, sort of taking up Isaac's space in her mind. And she becomes fearful again and she stops trusting God again and it causes her to be cruel. Uh, but we hear God say to Abraham, I've got this. I've got this. Do what she says, but I will take care of it. And so Sarah turns Hagar out with just a skin of water, basically sentencing her to death, sentencing, sentencing, uh, sentencing Ishmael to death. But God sees Hagar, right? She, she's named God, the one who sees me. God sees Hagar. And God hears Ishmael. And this is fun. Um, Ishmael basically means God hears. And so what this passage says is, uh, God hears, God hears. <laughs> God hears Ishmael, God hears uh, the one who God hears and uh, assures her that God's promises uh, will be fulfilled, that God's steadfast love is there for her and Ishmael as well. And this is an incredibly um, liberating, um, inclusive, radically inclusive story of God's favor being really extended to all people, um, not simply to, um, to Isaac's line, but that, that God will do good through Ishmael's line as well. And we hear that Hagar took him back, found him an Egyptian bride, um, and indeed uh, he would be the father of nations as well. It's a desperate story. It's a painful story. It's a story that shows what happens when we let fear win, which is what Sarah did. When we don't trust God to fulfill God's promises and somehow feel like we've got to Got to clear the deck so that God can follow through on God's promises. Made her cruel. Made her really um, threaten Hagar and Ishmael's life uh, with death. And truly God heard, God saw, uh, and God saved. We also have the passage uh, from Matthew, which has some really troubling imagery. Um, it reads a little bit like uh, various sayings of Jesus. And in some Bibles, you'll actually see this section entitled Various Sayings of Jesus. Um, they kind of read more like bullet points. They don't hang together all that well. Um, though Matthew weaves them together into this missionary discourse um, that doesn't actually send anyone out. And it comes right after the passage we heard last week um, where uh, the disciples were encouraged to be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. And then we launch into this whole passage um, of uh, difficult and challenging things, but encouragement. And what I appreciate about this passage is its honesty. Jesus doesn't say, if you believe in me, you will never suffer. If you believe in me, uh, you'll never struggle. If you believe in me, you'll never be in danger. He doesn't say that. But what he does says is God is with you. I am with you. You are known by God. You are not alone. God sees, God hears, right, from Genesis. And so we hear that refrain that really does tie all these various sayings together. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Even a sparrow, even a sparrow doesn't fall, but God knows it. And every hair on your head is counted. I wish Sarah had known that. I wish Sarah had known she could trust a God who knew how many hairs were on her head. Do not be afraid. Indeed, God will be there. And we can trust this. We can trust God's presence with us in part uh, because of what we see emerging out of Romans. We are going to spend a full 18 weeks in Romans, 17 more weeks to go. Um, and... Uh, We'll be spending the whole summer, whole summer long in Romans. And we start to get a handle on Paul's theology and really Paul's Christology in this passage uh, from Romans. And we'll come back to this again and again, week after week. For Paul, it really is about participation in Christ. Um, even the crucifixion is not so much about sacrifice for Paul. It's not so much about forgiveness for Paul. It's really about that which allows us to participate in Christ. It's transformative and, um, uh, and transferable, in fact. And you know, it's that which brings us new life through Jesus' resurrection. And so we hear that through our baptism, we participate fully 
in Christ. We live with Christ, we die with Christ, and we're born again in Christ through the resurrection. And, um, and we hear that, um, this wonderful refrain, uh, you know, if we, um, if we're forgiven, should we just say, well, you know, let's let uh, grace abound and let's just keep sinning so even more grace can abound. He says, oh no, not that. Um, and we need to know that this participation in Christ uh, really does lift up, again, for Paul, the nature of sin. And the nature of sin for Paul is not a list of things we're not supposed to do. It's really um, that nature uh, that separates us from God, that separates us from one another, that causes us to fear. And um, one of my favorite uh, commentators, Matt Skinner, says that um, sin is a colonizer and an enslaver and will entrap us and not only... Um, to our destruction, but to the destruction of others. Um, it's that insidious. And so um, surrendering all of ourselves through our baptism to new life in Christ and full participation in Christ um, is really what is required. And um, we hear loud and clear in this passage that we can no longer plead ignorance. We need to be living these new lives in Christ, not simply sinning so grace can abound, but living a new life. And all of these together lead me to wonder, um, how are we no longer able to plead ignorance of our own sin, uh, individual or even corporate, um, and reading this passage back into the Genesis passage as well, and the relationship between Sarah and Hagar, and the brokenness and sin in that relationship, and dare I say, the racism in that story and how Hagar who has been kidnapped and enslaved is treated by Sarah as an object as a means to an end um, and as completely disposable and um, it leads me to again ask us where we find ourselves in this story how are we no longer able to plead ignorance how are we Sarah how are we Hagar? How are we no longer able to plead ignorance in the last week, the last weeks, the last months? Uh, we've been learning a lot. Some of us have been learning uh, things we, we were never taught in school. Um, some of us were blessed to have friends who made sure we were well informed. Um, but some of us have learned new things. For example, uh, the massacre in Tulsa, Oklahoma uh, that took pl place um, what was called the Black Wall Street, because it was the wealthiest uh, black community in the country, in the country, when in 1921, um, white terrorizers destroyed it and, and uh, brought murder and bloodshed and destruction. And, and some of us just learned about this recently because of some other instances um, coming up in the news. Maybe kids in Oklahoma learned that in Oklahoma history, but a lot of us never learned about that in our American history. Some of us are just learning about Juneteenth, which was uh, the 19th of this month. Juneteenth, which is the celebration of true emancipation, finally finalized in Galveston, Texas in 1965, after the Emancipation Proclamation in, did I say 1965? 1865, um, after the Emancipation Proclamation in 1862. Uh, and so Juneteenth is celebrated by our African-American brothers and sisters as uh, a true Independence Day um, and a, a, a deep celebration. And many of us never knew this until recently. Wasn't taught in our history books. Maybe if we um, were in, in Texas and we were studying the history of Texas, we might have learned about Juneteenth. But it likely wasn't taught us in our high school U.S. history textbooks but we're learning and we need to keep learning. We're not done learning. In order for us to continue to work to heal the racial divides in this country and to have true reconciliation and repairing of relationship, we need to keep learning. We, we can no longer plead ignorance. We need to keep learning and live new lives in Christ. And so that brings me back to the question of how we hear the story of Sarah and Hagar. Few minutes ago I asked you where do we find ourselves how are we like Sarah 
how are we like Hagar? There are times when we are the one who is cast out into the wilderness. Um, but how often by our choices are we also more like Sarah, treating other people um, as a means to an end uh, for what they can give us or not paying attention to how our actions impact them, how out of our own fear or our own desire for comfort, um, we don't think about the consequences for other people our choices we make around climate, climate change, our choices we make to ignore systemic racism. How are we like Sarah? Here's the good news. Jesus calls to us, do not be afraid. And through our baptism, we participate in Christ. We do not need to be slaves to sin. We can be free, liberated, children of God through our baptism. We have nothing to fear. We are all precious in God's eyes and, and our preciousness does not have to come at the expense of another and another's preciousness in God's eyes does not happen at our expense. Not even a sparrow falls, but God knows it. And God knows how many hairs are on your head and on mine. Do not be afraid. These readings are full of suffering. This world is full of suffering. God calls us to do the work that brings healing and to trust in God's love. God's eye is on the sparrow. And I know he's watching you and watching me. Amen. Let us recite together the Nicene Creed, the foundation of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In preparation for the birthday and anniversary prayer, we invite you to let us know in the Facebook comments if you're celebrating a birthday or anniversary this week so we can pray for, your, for you during the service. Prayers of the People, a litany for Father's Day. For fathers everywhere who have given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers that mourn. For men who may or may not have children of their own, but act like a father to someone in need of advice, support, nurturing, and love. Holy God, hear this prayer for our father figures. For stepfathers who have assumed that role with love and joy, who have loved the children of another as their own and created a new family. Holy God, hear the prayer for stepfathers. For adoptive fathers, 
who have heard the call of God to lovingly step forward for those that need their care. Holy God, hear this prayer for adoptive father, fathers. For fathers who've been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to the needs of their children and have not sustained their families. Holy God, have mercy on absentee fathers. For fathers who struggle with temptation, violence, or addiction, for those who do harm and for those whom they have harmed. Holy God, have mercy on fathers that struggle. For new fathers full of hope, for longtime fathers full of wisdom, for the fathers yet to be and fathers soon to be. Holy God, hear our prayer for the fathers of your church. For those that have shaped our lives without claim of family or kinship, for those who have taught us, guided us, shaped us, and molded us into servants of Christ our Lord. Holy God, hear our prayer for the fathers of our faith. God our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share with one another the signs of God's peace and know we share that peace with you. And I look forward to uh, saying this prayer every week. It's one of those fun moments of connection with one another as we offer the birthday and anniversary prayer, praying together. Watch over thy servants, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to the offertory again, I thank you so much for your continued generosity to St. Peter's and our mission as a church. I also want to thank everyone who donated to Feeding San Diego uh, or the Bishop's Emergency Fund in honor of my birthday last week. Um, I was humbled by your generosity there as well. As we come to the offertory um, here supporting the mission and ministry of St. Peter's, I encourage you to use our text to give at 858-252-0622, or you can give online at stpetersdelmar.net slash give. Or we do go to the post box about once a week, and our PO box is 336 Delmar, California, 92014. Walk in love, as Christ loves us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. And as I imagine the 5 o'clock and 7.45 ushers coming forward, we say together, all things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray together this general, general thanksgiving from the New Zealand prayer book. God, our creator, our center, our friend, we thank you for our good life, for those who are dear to us, for our dead, and for all who have helped and influenced us. We thank you for the measure of freedom we have and the extent to which we control our lives. And most of all, we thank you for the faith that is in us, for our awareness of you and our hope in you. Keep us, we pray you, thankful and hopeful and useful until our lives shall end. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you on this day and always. Amen. Well, we have a few announcements. Again, Sarah, thank you for being with us as our reader. I'm so grateful when our lectors are willing and able to join us in this adventure that is leading worship online. Uh, we're all learning so many new skills. I want to draw your attention in the bulletin. We set aside for personal devotion what ordinarily would have been our prayers of the people, um, the praying with the scriptures. And they're just beautiful. And uh, I didn't want to treat the fathers any differently than we treated the mothers on Mother's Day. So we use the prayers for Father's Day. But I also wanted you to have for your own devotion and prayer this week, um, the really beautiful prayers that are lifted out of um, the readings that we, um, I would say we enjoyed, but they were kind of challenging this week, but I just wanted to draw your attention to that. I want to thank everyone who has taken the time to complete our worship survey. Um, some of you jumped on that really, really quick. I was like, oh, wow, these people are passionate. Um, we're grateful for your honesty, um, your encouragement, your candor, even when you had to say difficult things. I'm really, really grateful. But here's the challenge. I can't follow up with you, uh, particularly those of you who were kind of setting up a red flag or saying something like, I'm kind of needing help here. I, we don't have a link to your email address and your answer. So if you shared information in that about how this is a difficult time for you or you're feeling, feeling disconnected from St. Peter's, I hope you'll do me a favor. I hope you'll email me this week. Uh, email me and we can set up a time to talk. Uh, I want to help you reconnect. I want to help you um, connect with community and connect with God. My email address is pblair at stpetersdelmar.net. And um, I just encourage you, please, to, to reach back, if you will, um, so that we can support you on your spiritual journey during this really difficult time. I just want to acknowledge um, some of you in, your, in the survey said, I'm really loving worship online. This is great. Um, some of you aren't loving it so much, and I respect that. Um, if there are other ways we can help you be spiritually fulfilled, though, I really uh, want to do that and work with you on that. So please do let us know. Um, really fun. You'll notice um, in the bulletin an announcement about uh, Nancy Burnett's latest uh, workshop. She's currently leading the Celtic Crossings workshop, which is I'm getting hearing great reviews about um, Celtic Crossings. Well, she's offering another uh, next month and into August um, called Mending Life. And um, we posted a video of Nancy talking about that workshop on Facebook not long ago. Uh, but I want to encourage you to pray about that possibility. Notice the information in the bulletin. You can register um, an RSVP with Vicki Harney in the office. And her email is vharney at stpetersdelmar.net. But I hope you'll consider that possibility of staying connected with the church community and with God um, and a really wonderful, wonderful servant of God who's sharing her gift so generously, Nancy is. So I want to encourage you to check that out. And also the Coffee and Connection with um, Debbie Z, which is on Wednesday. So notice those announcements in your bulletin. Notice also um, the VBS watch parties coming up. Sarah's been working very hard getting a virtual vacation Bible school ready for the kids. So um, I hope you'll take that in and grownups might enjoy this too. So uh, you might want to check that out for fun. Also uh, note that um, our moms group is uh, changing affiliations and changing names. It's going to be Moms Uplifting Moms. And there's an announcement from Sarah 
in the bulletin for that as well. Thank you again for being with us and for sharing this time. Deacon Bob, will you dismiss us? Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Bye-bye. <laughs>